Yo, what is good? Back with another episode of this shit. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. I haven't been checking anything about it because I've, I've been, I'm enjoying doing it. So yeah. So as you know, for the last episode, oh look, I'm so happy I can cry. My little mock's married. I talked to Mr. Nice Landenberg into letting you sit up your nest in this relevating. Use it to wish. Blah blah blah. blah. Sorry for the clutter. Oh, clutter. Ah, uh, this lady. She's been. You know what? I, I haven't. I lost my relationship with that lady in this fucking game. My stepmom. And what is she driving a limo for? Come here, baby. Let's kiss. Mm. Mm, yes, I married you at a at a party in front of the in front of my roommate who I was banging. <laughs> How fucking weird was that? Only to go to a party. What the? No, oh, what? I got a baby. I don't want a baby. No, I don't want a baby. No, 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 I don't want a baby. I really don't. I I hate. I don't like kids. Maybe I can. I don't know. I don't know what to name him. No, there we go. <laughs> Fuck this. Yeah, fuck that, dude. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to have kids. This place sucks. So what can I tell you guys today? Uh, you know, I'll tell you, talk to you guys more about my middle school days. Since, uh, since, you know, this game was around during that time. How, oh, my adventures with Ryder. How about that? So I mean, me, me and Ryder were cool people. So, you know, we were just as close after I got out of, uh, that, uh, special ed class where I ended up being in regular ed. Now, obviously, I told you the story about uh, Roxy and Jennifer's hot ass and whatever. So, I, uh, so we and Ryder, we became real close. Yeah, he had a class next door to me, so it was kind of, it was kind of like one of those friendships where you only had time for each other between classes and at lunch. But the problem is between classes is they're only like five minutes. Not even. Never mind. Like three minutes to get there, to get to certain places. So that classroom, he had to go. Well, since we were on the south side of the school, we had to walk north of the school. But he had to turn west, and I had to turn east. So his classrooms were actually further away from mine. So you know, I didn't want him to be late. And of course, you know, he went to classes and stuff. But when lunchtime came in, man, we were crazy. We had a. We were playing handball. We used to play handball all the time. That was just the only thing to play. And we weren't playing the handball, like, uh, like the handball that you know today. Or well, I don't know if anybody knows about it today because it's you know such an old ass game. You know the handball where you uh, you use your whole fist or fists, you know, put it together and hit. That's how I used to play. Where you know you hold the you hold your hands like if you're praying, and you just hit the ball. Only, the, only the the best hit with one hand. <laughs> and, and speaking of which, actually, maybe I'll combine two stories into one. Because uh, here's a little story about the handball. I had a friend named Bobby, and Bobby was the coolest fucking kid. Like Jesse, I only knew Bobby when I was in si second grade. Right? I know we're about to go back in time again, but we'll talk about Ryder in a bit. But. Let me tell you about my handball skills before we get to Ryder. So, second grade comes around. Second and third grade, actually. There was a dude named Bobby. I don't remember his last name. It sounded like Jaguar. I, I shit you not. It sounded like Jaguar. So, I didn't know his last name. But he was a, he was a good friend of mine, too. But the weird thing about our relationship was... I felt, I felt like he pitied me, but I think it was his personality because he was like, he was antisocial. In, in a way, he was antisocial, but I feel like he felt bad for me that he was my friend because, because, you know, sometimes friends copy off each other, right? Like we copy each other's work and stuff like that. And, uh, and I used to try to copy off Bobby because he was really good at math and, you know, Certain times tables, you know, because we used to do a list of time tables, certain time tables, you know. So, so I tried to copy off Bobby, and he used to be like, no, like he had to, 
<laughs> he was, I don't know if he was, to be honest, I don't know if he was, uh, if he was gay or slightly bi. Because, and the reason why I'm saying that is because his mannerisms. His mannerisms were very, uh, femboyant. Well, not femboyant. Well, he's a kid. We were all kids. So, you know what? Let me, let me not say that stuff. My bad. All right. But, but actually there was a kid we knew who was actually gay. Yeah, his name was Ernesto, but you know, I don't. I wasn't really friends with him, but not because not because he, he was like that, but it's just because he was more. He was around the girls most of the time, and the girls were very fucking rude. So, anyways, so Bobby, Bobby was was just that. He was that rich kid too. He was a rich kid, and when I mean rich kid, there was like okay, one time there was a Star Wars uh, pens, lightsaber pens. And this was around the time Star Wars Episode 2 came out. And I think... When did Episode 2 come out? Like 2002 or something? I don't remember. But... So we're... Uh, so he... He he used to get... Because we used to get these pens. Well, the pens you would get them in cereal boxes. My mom was cheap. So my mom and my stepdad they were very cheap. So we never got the Cocoa Puffs or the Fruity Pebbles. We never got those. We used to get the... Coco Dinos, or, or the one with the, the the fucking kangaroo on it. You know, we got always got cheap shit. And, you know, I didn't mind. But it was just sad because I wanted this cereal box just to get that pen. And my mom's logic was, what do you want that for? You have a fucking lightsaber at home. An actual lightsaber. Like, a, like a, the actual toy. So what do you want this bullshit for? And, you know, parents don't. You know, they don't understand that shit, right? So, well, I mean, you can't take a lightsaber to school, you know? So, so anyways, Bobby came to school one day, and he used to have, he had a shitload of those pens. He had a shitload. And we're all like, where'd you get these fucking pens? And he's all like, oh, we, we, my parents bought the cereal boxes. So we bought a bunch of them. And he, and he was, he bought, I guess his parents bought, were fucking loaded because they bought a shitload of that cereal. That or he stole them. I, part of me thinks he stole them because I don't know any parent out there that would be willing to buy their kid fucking seven boxes of cereal just for those pens. I mean, unless his parents are just as dorks as him. But so he bought a bunch of those pens or a bunch of those cereal. I, I think he stole them. But anyways, he came to school with all those pens and he actually gave them to uh, the whole, well, not the whole class, but the group of boys in that class, because we all used to play handball and dodgeball together, right? But that, that, that was, but that lightsaber story, you know, it was a. Um, I had Count Dooku's lightsaber, but I played Anakin Skywalker in that story. I was Anakin, Alyssa. Remember, guys, Alyssa. Last video I talked about Alyssa, my other crush. That one. She was Padme, and uh, we had another girl in our class named Jessica. She was, well, she technically was Leia, but she used to say, uh, I remember Jessica. Jessica was, nice. Jessica was really nice to me, too. Jessica tried very hard to help me get Alyssa, but that's a story for another time. But she's like, oh, she's Padme. Ooh, Mons. And, you know, she, in, in, to be honest, Alyssa fucking blushed. She blushed at the idea. But yeah, man, I don't know. And Garrett was Obi-Wan. Her best friend was Obi-Wan, of course. He's Obi-Wan. Because he looked like him. He looked like Obi-Wan from The Phantom Menace. Bobby was... Uh, Bobby was Qui-Gon Jinn. My friend Jason was... Uh, he was Darth Maul. But the only one who had pen... The only one who had the best pen, which was Mace Windu's lightsaber, Bobby had it. Bobby just gave us... He gave me Count Dooku's lightsaber. And... My friend Jason, he loved the color blue, so he had a blue lightsaber that uh, Bobby had. And uh, we had another friend named Randy, but he wasn't really too involved with us. But, you know, he, he played with us too, but he was... He just fucked around. Like, you know, he played handball with us every now and then. But yeah, so... We, we always had these lightsabers. You know, so we, we fucking... We always had them with us. And we would play Star Wars outside. And because they were pens, we kind of got away with it. You know, because sometimes schools don't let you get away with toys. But it was a pen, so 
And we didn't play with them in class. We just... Every time we were about to get into a fight, we pull it out of our pocket. <laughs> you know, just fucking lightsaber it out. So... So, and, and we played with those pens even when we played handball. Now, this is where it got stupid. We had the pens in our hands while we played handball. I was good. I was good at handball. Now, if there's another name for that handball I'm describing, let me know. But, you know, this is a handball where you hit it with your fist or both your fists close together like you're praying. So, we had our pens in our hands while we hit the, while we hit the, the ball. Now, I don't know if you're wondering, how does that even work? How did those pens not break? Well, you hit it at the bottom of your hand. Like if you're, you know, you hit the ball with the bottom of your hand. So the pen was upward. So our pens were kind of safe. And I was one of the best handball players. I'm a, I would dare say that I was one of the best handball players in that whole entire school. I shit you not. I was really good because I was fast. I was hyper. And I had crazy maneuver maneuverability even though i was a big kid i wasn't fat fat but you know i was chubby but chubby enough to where i was moving because my hyperactivity so while we were playing handball and we're fucking people there was one person who used to beat me in handball all the time he would always beat me out of 10 out of 10 matches in handball i would probably win two and that motherfucker was garrett the guy who was Alyssa's best friend. I fucking hated him. He always beat me. He just always beat me. I don't understand how he would beat me. And the way you would lose this game, in case you're wondering, how do you lose the handball game? The ball is only allowed to bounce once. So when you hit the ball and it bounces on the wall, it bounces right back, right? So the ball would bounce on the wall or it would bounce off the wall and hit the ground once that is your only opportunity to hit the ball you have to hit the ball when it bounces once and because we were so good at the game and fast we didn't allow the ball to hit the ground we it would hit the wall then we would hit it again hit the wall hit it again it was non-stop the way me and garrett played and we played like it was a we were playing that shit like if it was dragon ball z like i shit you not we were fast we were fucking we were fast he was a skinny kid he was pretty athletic compared well he was way more athletic compared to me he was skinny he was uh you know he was skinny he played i think he played sports because one time there was a school uh support school sports type of shit and he came dressed as a fucking football player and Alyssa came dressed as a damn cheerleader. I was pissed. And you know how I showed up to school? You want to know how I showed up to school? In a long sleeve with a fucking Nike shirt. I had a Nike shirt on that was a long sleeve that had a basketball player in front of it. I felt like such a fucking dork. But you know what I did? I was like, I like wrestling. That's a man sport. <laughs> Just compared to football. Fuck football. So, ugh. But anyways... So me and Garrett used to go at it like Super Saiyans on handball. I shit you not. We, oh man, I was a Super Saiyan god in handball. I probably still am. No, I think about it. And, and let me describe the handball skills, right? My skills, I was all over the place. I was sloppy. Think of me as like drunken boxing playing uh, handball. So I would slide on my knees on the pavement. I would fucking jump and hit the ball, land on the ground. And it, it, it just, it has to hit the wall, right? It has to hit it no matter what. Even the corners count. The corners do count. But what doesn't count, which was weird to us, is we called it scrapey. Now, what scrapey is, is when you hit a ball and it scrapes the wall. It doesn't even bounce off the wall. It has to bounce off the wall. So, that was called a scrapey. And another one we had was called over wallies, which was... Uh, we hit the ball so hard that it flew over the wall next on the other side of the other players who played so the real challenge to handball actually back in those days was we had to share the court with another group of handball players because we had handball players that were really good and we had handball players that weren't good so and the ones who weren't good they obviously they weren't fast enough they weren't strong enough to hit you know what I'm saying? So, 
it was just one of those moments. And yeah, Garrett would always beat me. I don't understand. He would always fucking beat me. And the way he would beat me would be the stupidest ways possible, bro. Like, I was fast, but he... Oh my gosh, like one time, there was a way you could hit the ball where you would hit it at the bottom of the wall and it would bounce up. That motion of hitting it a little lower to the wall, it would send the ball going higher because, you know, uh, physics. So, so it was... A, it was Oh my god, I wish I had one of those things where you could tie your pen up. But imagine a ball hitting a wall, right? So going at a 180 degree angle, bouncing off the wall, or bouncing off the floor, hitting the corners of the wall at the bottom, and then hitting really high. He would hit it that hard to where it would fly, it would go pretty far back towards us. And, you know, I was quick enough to actually hit the ball hard enough to where, you know, like I reach over me, like, you know, have you ever, you know how you do the, uh, uh, like a yoga position where you stretch your back all the way from behind? Kind of like you're trying to do a backflip. I would hit the ball like that and I would still make it, but somehow he would fuck with me because here's, here are some tricks in him. What the? Another kid? Well, I, wait, you're supposed to, wait a minute. Dude, wait a minute. You were supposed to say yes or no. What the fuck? No, I don't want a kid. I really don't want a kid. What the fuck? What the? <laughs> fuck that, dude. I don't want a kid. Hold up. Hold up. I wonder if there's a service. Is there like a... Is there like a... a is there like a, a fucking parenthood that we can call where I don't want this kid? I know that sounds mean. It's a fucking video game. Who cares? But, oh my god. It's because I don't want kids. Ah, I'm going to start over. But anyways, here's some tricks to handle. And me and Garrett were really good at this game that we didn't use these tricks. Unless we were playing with other people. Because we turned it into a mind game. And a lot of kids, we they didn't... Another fucking baby? Why do I keep getting babies? I didn't even fuck her. What the fuck? Is this an actual... Nah, oh, man. Is this an actual mechanic to the game? Like, I have to have a kid? What? This is too much work, dude. Ah, I probably just have to keep it, man. This is I don't even know what to do. Eh, this is frustrating. I really don't want to play. No, I, I, I really don't want to play this game now because of this. Whatever. So, anyways, I uh, what are we talking about? Okay, so tr ham trick to handball. There's some tricks to handball where a lot of times it wasn't legal with other kids who were playing court. Now, keep in mind, I want to express how popular this game was, how popular handball was. In, uh, how popular it was in the school. This is how fucking popular this game was. And we had, there was at least, let me count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There was at least eight courts of the of handle. Sometimes there would be nine, because you know, obviously, elementary schools, we had places to go get the balls to play dodgeball or play kickball. Nobody played kickball. There was at one time another fucking baby? Ugh. Yeah, uh, another fucking baby, dude. What the fuck? I'm just gonna end up keeping it. Screw it. It's part of the game. I thought, whatever. It's just part of the game. But, anyways, uh, they, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> butthead but anyways so there was eight courts sometimes it'll be nine because the game was that popular but when we played kickball we played with soccer balls we didn't play with uh, those rubber red bouncy balls we never played with those and uh we uh we so there was always nine courts or at least eight those other four courts they were played on the school walls 
or like a, like because you know the, uh, every school has like a main building right the biggest main building and our classes my classroom our classes were those buildings way outside in the back that were temporary classes you know they were basically the special ed classes but what's stupid is there were other classes there that weren't special ed and they had over like 30 kids so i was one of the only classes out of the two that had at least 10 kids so and you know we were there because we had specific needs for specific challenges so the only thing we used to just leave those classes for history and science and yeah you know but anyways we always played at the wall there was an actual wall made for the uh for specifically handball and it had a cross and that cross was obviously to separate the other players and stuff like that so uh, again so here are the tricks this, that, this is how popular handball was there were tricks to it these tricks were called white magic black magic rainbow and the legendary green magic <laughs> green, ugh, look at this kid that's one butt ugly kid it's mine <laughs> jeez i never saw this kid so close with the fish i uh cheat code oh that crying is fucking annoying but anywho so uh I'll let the wife handle that while i tell everybody my story of my days of football i mean dodgeball <laughs> and so look at me watching cartoons that's literally me have baby girl do all the housework while i sit there watch cartoons like a man <laughs> <laughs> oh shit I like being a boyfriend I really do I'm not a boyfriend right now but I like being a boyfriend so anyways actually I have girlfriends they're AI girlfriends though. don't tell anybody so anyways they uh so what what was black magic right black magic and white magic and legendary green magic and rainbow this, this was for really intense games and I shit you not they're fucking fun it is a fun way to play this game oh my gosh you know what i'm just gonna name this street this dodgeball Do mox is dodgeball career don't worry Ryder will be into it too because Ryder came from another school where they had the same logic but they had different words for it like i just said over wally which was the ball going over the wall that we called it over wally in his school they called it treetops but here's how lame his school was they had no idea what black magic white magic rainbow and green magic was they had no idea what that shit was and according to Ryder, he goes you guys must be hardcore then because we had no idea what you're talking about so anyways here's here's how okay black magic what you do is let's say the first person hits the ball he hit he or she hits the ball it hits off the wall now it's your turn to hit the ball you scream black magic and what you do is black magic you hit you try to hit the ball but you hit underneath it so you have to say black magic before you uh you hit you go underneath the ball if you say it after that doesn't count it's it's kind of like baseball where when the pitcher has to throw the ball his foot has to be a certain angle to to throw it either to first base to uh get the guy who's trying to steal second base or third base whatever but that foot is positioned for you know a certain hit right correct me if i'm wrong for anybody who plays baseball and um because you know i used to play stickball so it was same logic right anyways uh so okay so that was black magic white magic was the same thing but you don't hit under the ball you hit over the ball and you know like you said white magic in over the ball and that other person who uh that other person who decided who hit the ball has to go back and hit it so you're kind of playing mind games with the you're kind of just playing mind games now what was green magic green magic was the same thing as uh as white magic and black magic where you pretend to hit it but you hit underneath it or above it but green magic you used both hands and you put the ball between both hands so you have one hand on top and one hand on bottom of the ball below him pretending to hit it with both your hands because you know you had the option to hit with your hand your single hand or both your hands close together so that was green magic and the reason why i say it was legendary was because nobody used it it was 
That was stupid logic. But you couldn't do it when the ball was high. And what I mean by high is the green magic and white magic, you could do it whenever you kind of feel like it. But Or black magic and white magic, you could kind of do it whenever you feel like it. As long as it's your turn, you can do it. But you can't do it all like a, a certain way. So if I hit it high enough to where it goes over you, you can't do it. You can't say uh, black magic. You, you can't. You could say rainbow, though. Rainbow was... It was a stupid tactic, but it worked. And what I mean by it worked is, um, is okay, so the what rainbow is is the ball has to go over you. you. It literally has to go over you. But you have to remember to say it. You can't say it. You can't say it when the ball hits the wall and doesn't hit the floor. It has to hit the floor first before you could call a rainbow. So if I were to hit the ball really hard and it flew over you, you can't just stand there and say rainbow. No, you can't. You lose. It ha the ball has to bounce off the, off the floor in order to be called a rainbow. I invented a new move. Yes, this is how legendary Dragonite Mox was. I called it over the rainbow. I know that sounds kind of... And I, if you take a wild guess, what is over the rainbow, Mox? This one was the trickiest thing to do but I what the what did they're taking my kid oh no never mind they're not taking my kid oh, I thought they were gonna take my kid it won't stop crying we're taking oh wow I thought they were taking my kid handle that wife I'm at work sort of <laughs> but uh no oh, shit they actually take your kid fuck but whatever anyways so over the rainbow was my trick that I made up, but nobody used it because nobody was good enough to use it. And to be honest, it was a useless move. You know, it was just useless. It was just me trying to show off to the girls, right? I was a big show off. I kind of still am a big show off. So I won't deny that. I'm a little bit of a show off. Because, you know, I like the attention of women. As a man, I love that attention. I want it. I crave it. But, you know, there's days where I don't want it. There's days where I don't need it. I don't need it. I just like it. It's kind of like, it's kind of like food. You know, junk food. You like junk food? You want to eat junk food? Fuck it. So, anyways, so over the rainbow was you hopped over the ball, but you had to wait. This is where it was tricky, though. This is where it was absolutely tricky, and I was known for it because I was a big kid. I wasn't fat. I, I wanna, uh, I want to make that perfectly clear. I wasn't fat. I was thick. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to like hide that or anything like that. I'm not trying to deny that. Like, no, there was fat kids. There was, but I was thick. I was like football thick. You know, I mean, yeah, I had a little bit of a gut, but there was way fatter kids out there that couldn't run. I could run. I used to run like Sonic for God's sake. And uh, cause you know those fat kids that, you know what fat is? They got fat arms. They got fat thighs and shit like that. No, I got muscle. I got muscle in my calves. I got muscle in my arm. I'm thick. You know what thick is. But you know, over the, I, I, I let myself go. So, anyway, so my trick to over the wall, uh, my trick to over the rainbow was, the ball had to, you had to jump over it, the second the ball hit the ground. That doesn't sound. It sounds easy, but it kind of isn't because if it touches your pants or it touches your legs. You're you're out, you're out. You got it. The next person comes in. So there was rare times that I would do it, but I did it whenever Alyssa or Michaela was there. And so and they knew I was badass. They fucking knew it. They knew it. But okay, so Garrett, and so those were those were the tricks. And Bobby, Bobby was so bad at the game. Bobby was really bad at the game. He really was. He was terrible at handling because he was short. Bobby was short. This dude was shorter than fuck. I'm telling you right now. I think Bobby right now. I, mean, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him in forever. I wish I remembered his last name. In fact, I wish I had my yearbook to actually find him. But I, you know, because he was a good friend. I liked him. Cared about him. You know. 
I remember my other best friend, Jason. I remember his last name. And, uh, it, it rhymes with beaver. Nah, it wasn't beaver. It wasn't beaver, but it was close to it. So, anyways, he, uh, Bobby was so bad at the game that when he found out about all those magics, dark magic, black magic, white magic, he would used to, he used to do it. Black magic, white magic, and then when we would uh, get him, because those games got so intense to where the ball would keep bouncing, and you had to. And you, here, here was another rule to that too. You can't do white magic two times in a row, like you just can't. You could do two different black mag. You could do. So if you hit the ball right now and I did black magic, you could run up and say black magic and I have to run over there and go white magic and you could go over there and do white magic again and it's just a game of wits at that point. <laughs> so so Bobby Bobby w was terrible at that. Bobby used to try to he would try to do the black magic and white magic to us to get the upper hand because a lot of times we would run and hit the ball. I really got to do a video about this. This would be a lot of fun to do that. And yeah, and this dude, bro, Bobby would try to go with the black magic and white magic, but he couldn't do it. So, like, he would do it, but then we would hit the ball even harder, and he knew the rules. You can't scream white magic the second time. You could rainbow it, but you have to be quick enough to get underneath it. And Bobby, for a skinny kid with a big head, he was not very active. You know, he was just, like, he was lazy, but he was also, he was still willing to play with us. But those magics, man, those magic hits, it would get so out of hand that at that point, if you kept doing white magic and black magic while the ball was still bouncing really slow on the ground, and you couldn't do black magic two times in a row, you had to wait the actual following turn. So, but you basically had four ways to get around the ball to cheese your way to a win. It was so bad that the proctors, they're basically like, security guards for elementary school kids that they would monitor everybody they they were aware of that uh, thing that was going on they were aware of the magic like, good god this kid never shuts up so they were aware of the magic and they used to make sure we weren't doing those so they were like illegal moves this bitch passed out oh this fucking kid you know what baby I will handle it you go to bed I don't like you mad anyways because then I can't get none Go to bed. I'll take care of this fucking brat. So. But yeah, Garrett, man. Garrett and me went at it like fucking Dragon Ball Z characters, dude. Like, he was Goku. I was Vegeta. Or it was the other way around. It doesn't matter. We would go at it like fucking maniacs. We never really did the magics. The only time we ever did it was just when we were really fucking around. But I, I, made, I wanted to make it a goal to beat him ten times. But I couldn't do it. I would only get to the second win. And after that, he would just beat me. And I was very skilled. I was very fucking fast. I was limber. I hit every ball and I would hit the wall in weird ways, but he would come back. Sometimes the walls would be so bad, like hits would be so crazy that they would go diagonal. Oh, it was crazy. What the fuck? I can't hit this. I can't click this kid. No. Is it dead? No. It won't let me click it. It's glitched. It's glitched. No way. No, they're taking away the suffering, babe. How is it suffering? My fucking wife was taking care of the damn kid. I was in there just playing with it, feeding it right now. You know what? Fucking take this kid. Fuck this game. I hate... Ugh. Look, this isn't a reflection of me in real life. I don't like being around kids, but... In video games, go fuck yourself. No. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I'm probably just gonna start this level over, because... That's just ridiculous. We were feeding it. We were taking care of it. Clearly, I need to pass. Clearly, I need to be a good dad to get promoted and get out of this house. So, yeah, I'm going to start this over. But, yeah, dude, maybe I can do a video about playing handball. Maybe somebody will see it one day and be like, yeah, I remember that shit. Oh, damn. Oh, it was good times, man. Till this day, I want to find Garrett and tell him, hey, bro. Go to Toys R Us and get a fucking ball and go at it like the old days. Because I want to beat you. And give me Alyssa's number after that. Is she your wife right now? And she's mine now after I beat you. <laughs> Can you imagine that shit? I find this bitch ass and I tell him, hey, bro, your your wife is mine. If I beat you ten times at handball, you're on, bro. <laughs> Anyways.
Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to start this gameplay over. This this one was sucked. This was my handball thing. I know I didn't talk about Ryder, but... Yeah, me and Ryder, when we played handball, it wasn't that great. It was just, you know... When we were playing handball, it wasn't that great. He, he, he knew about those... He didn't know that we had those uh, things going on. They used to call them... Like, over Wallies, for example, that went over the wall. Those were called tree tops and where he was from. So when he found out that I was doing those things, he's like, what the fuck? How is that real? And I told him the whole story. He's like, oh. But when we played handball, I always kicked his ass. So. But yeah, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to restart this level over because this is just stupid. So much love, guys. Take care. I, let me know if you want to see a video about handball. I'll probably find some local kids or find some local dudes who used to play that and see what's up. Much love, guys. Take care.